going on to Rome. It's a beautiful day. We got some Q's. We got some A's. Uh, thank you, everyone, who submitted questions. Uh, periodically, we'll put out on the community tab a call out for questions. Uh, you guys are the best. And we do need to get better at doing Q&A videos. Sometimes they get, they'll get lost in the soup. First up, R3. Uh, with all the cap room we have next year, Vikings have around $60 million in cap space, should they resign Darnold for an additional one to two, one to two years? Uh, I like the idea of running it back uh, if he's playing this well, and it opens up the option to return uh, an investment via trade if they want to go to JJ. So tag and trade could be an option. Franchise tag for quarterbacks next year probably be around $40 million plus. plus. Um, but I, I do think that, as every week passes and Darnold continues to play well, I, I do think that it's more likely that he's back. And I understand J.J. McCarthy is the future, but McCarthy's only heading to year two. Yes, there is a great competitive advantage for having your starting quarterback on his rookie deal. But also, at the end of the day, you, you've you been looking for this franchise quarterback for years, right? Kurt Cousins was eight, but then you remember the gong show of retreads and quarterbacks and, and, and picks that didn't work out. Sam Darnold's good right now, right? And he syncs up perfectly with what Kevin O'Connell wants to do. He's distributing. He has beautiful chemistry with Jefferson. Uh, he has great chemistry with, with Jalen Speedy Naylor. He gets Hawkinson and Addison back soon. And, I mean, the team is rallying around Sam Darnold, right? And that, that's my quarterback right now, man. Also, he's 27. Like, what if I told you the Vikings could have a quarterback who's playing at an MVP adjacent level, who is younger than Joe Burrow, who's younger than Josh Allen, who's younger than Patrick Mahomes, and you just want to let him walk because J.J. McCarthy might be good. Now, I'm fully in on the J.J. McCarthy train. Absolutely. But I hate to bring up this example, but Jordan Love sat for a couple, sat for three years. Aaron a Rodgers sat for three years. Steve Young and... Joe Montana, uh, of course, had that dynamic, and Darnold's even, you know, talked about his the parallels between his and uh, Steve Young's career, or he was inspired by Steve Young's career because Steve Young came out of BYU and went to the USFL, was terrible with the Bucks for a couple of seasons, and, and then was the backup for Joe Montana. He wasn't a full time starter until he's thirty one, right? And he still became a, a Hall of Fame quarterback. So it's going to be a. a the tougher the decision, the better it is for this team. And like, what do you like? What do you do if Darnold ends up like you know top four in MVP voting, throws for four thousand yards, one hundred plus quarterback rating for the season, double digit wins, wins a division, go on a playoff run, maybe even Super Bowl? Like, what do you do? What do you do? Right? Uh, of course, the tag and trade option is there, but this is what you've been looking for. Right, and I, I know. Hey, it's enticing. JJ McCarthy, rookie deal, is only twenty one. But if Darnold is exactly what this team has been needing for years, like, why would you look that gift horse in the mouth? I don't know. I don't know. But like I said, it's a, re it'd be a really good problem to have. Uh, Wesley White, uh, similar vein. Uh, with how Sam Darnold is looking, what are the chances of him getting re-signed? I think it's like 70% that he's back next year. And if resigned and looks the same next year, how would that affect J.J. McCarthy's chance of becoming a starting quarterback? I th Say Sam Darnold goes on a tear, like becomes like a Pro Bowl quarterback over the next three, four years. It just is what it is. And, you know, McCarthy, like he's doing the whole team first guy, posted on social media, loving Sam Darnold. Yes, I, I think at his heart he is a good teammate, but – also, he's a super competitive kid, and I, I do think that if he's having to sit two, three years behind Darnold, I think that he will uh, request a trade. I, I don't think that he would be a, a jerk about it, and I, I think that fans would understand it. Because remember, in in, in three years, Darnold's only going to be 30, right? And McCarthy, obviously with his potential, you know, would be a valuable trade chip. Now, I, I would prefer not to go down that road. Like maybe the Vikings ride out with Darnold for a, a year or two, yet even if he's playing at a high level, if JJ McCarthy is deemed ready to rock and roll, you, you flip Darnold for two first rounders. <sighs> baby, baby, come on, come on, man. But like I said, uh, it's all hypothetical right now. It's only been three games, but it's something that should be in the back of your mind coming up. Uh, next, MCS Skull from Scotland. Uh, are teams going to figure out Brian Flores, or are we fix into steamroll our way out of the playoffs and beyond? So. 
there there's some really great offensive minds around the NFL and a lot of really talented players and the Vikings. Um, I mean, the Vikings, they're going to play some good ass offenses here uh, in, in the remaining parts of the schedule. But with Flores, the defense, every single game plan has been different. And the, the, the toughest thing for the quarterbacks is when they're stacked at the line of scrimmage. And it, it's basically, so remember the Zimmer defense, it was pretty straightforward. So we're going to play cover two, first and second down. We're going to get you in third and long. And then we're going to do that double A-gap look. And you don't know if Kendricks and Barr are blitzing in those A-gaps. You don't know if Harrison Smith's coming off the edge. It's basically that, but ramped up to 11. Because Flora is stacking the line of scrimmage with seven, eight, nine players. right? And they're so good at making simple things for them look complicated for the offense. And, you know, a lot of you know, the film breakdown guys have gone into like th- this is hell for a quarterback because, A, you don't know who's blitzing. B, you don't know how to set up your protections. C, you don't know what coverage you're going to see. Uh, so you have to do all that on the fly. And that leads to indecisions that that made that leads to mistakes. And that leads to turnovers. That leads to sacks. All right. So I, I don't think that that necessarily will be solved. And also, given the depth of, of the Vikings, I mean, you really don't know what you're going to face game to game, down to down. Like, they have the capability to play a lot of press man. They did that against Houston. Uh, they, they played zone the first two games primarily. Uh, you don't know if it's going to be an odd or even front. And especially that NASCAR package where you got four edge rushers on the field at the same time. Woo! Come on, man. Also, Hadi Ward. Jihad Ward might be the MVP. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. But this defense is a lot of fun truly truly is and the thing about it is that you can't just play this defense with any personnel it has to be this personnel like given their given their ethos playing team defense unselfish ball they don't care who gets the credit as long as the job gets done which is great man uh king puppy money uh now that we have seen the vikings play three games and they're three and oh two of those games were difficult opponents what do you think the win ceiling is now who do you think they will lose to uh if they do go Vikings skull so any given sunday yeah. Um, but, you know, Packers game is going to be tough it, on the road division game, you know, whether it's love or Willis, uh, it, it is a big time test. Uh, you know, the jets, the jets look like they're getting their head out of their asses, uh, but they are starting to get dinged up by injury. Also, I think that that offensive line can get got. And I, I think that Rogers Boniva, uh, can, um, can get after that ass as well. Alliance. So I'm not buying Alliance, uh, but I mean, this still going to be tough. Uh, Rams, <laughs> I mean, Stafford, it's basically Stafford and a bunch of practice squad guys. Yeah. Uh, Colts, mm, Titans, mm, Jaguars, no. Bears, no. Uh, Cardinals, I, I still believe in the Cardinals. I do. Uh, Falcons, mm. uh, Seahawks, yes. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not just going to put it on the table and say like 14 and 3. Although, we are doing like a game-by-game prediction at some, uh, some point this week. But double-digit wins, certainly within reach. Could this team push for you know 12 13 certainly a possibility uh but I, I do think that if this team keeps playing the way that they're capable of playing i i think that they could contend in the nfc for the one seed and i, I don't think that's pie in the sky purple kool-aid sipping on per, uh, on scissor situate no that, that that's objectively legit yeah lastly uh ray petty uh, what are some feasible trades you would like to see at the trade deadline guard Guard. Find one of the bottom feeding teams and pick up one of their quality guards. Uh, so, I mean, look at the Colts, Quentin Nelson one time or Freeze, sure. Uh, or uh, trade, trade. Nah, it's not trade Turner. Like, who's a good right now? Um, oh, Damian Lewis. Yeah, D- Damian Lewis from the Panthers. Come on down, didn't it? And uh, I've wanted Lewis for a long time, ever since he was out of LSU, Seattle, etc. But yeah, I'm. I mean, trade deadline's coming up after week eight, so I think defensively they're good to go. Offensive line, I, w- I would like a little bit more depth, but we'll see. We'll, we'll certainly see. But uh, that's it. That's at uh, Q&A for this beautiful day. You guys are the best you know what to do. Skull production value. <laughs>